This is the Sigma 24mm f3.5 DG DN for L mount cameras and we're going to talk about it right after this. So before we get started I do just want to say a big thanks to Sigma USA who loaned me the lens for this review. I also want to say that this is a completely independent review and that all thoughts and expressions in this video are my own. Now in the description below you're also going to find some affiliate links and if you decide to make a purchase from any of those links I will make a small percentage from the sale. So let's get into the review of the Sigma 24mm f3.5 DG DN. Now, I don't usually reach for 24 mm primes, but these lenses are very popular with lots of photographers. These primes come in handy for landscapes and cityscapes and architectural photography, food photography, astrophotography, street photography, and so many more different genres. They're usually small, they usually have fast apertures, and because they're a prime, they produce sharp images. Now, Sigma's take on this 24mm prime is a little different thanks to the odd maximum aperture of f3.5, but don't let that put you off. Let's take a closer look at it. This Sigma 24mm f3.5 DG DN is another one of Sigma's i-series lenses. Sigma has also released 35, 45, and 65mm variants. These new i-series lenses are technically Sigma contemporary lenses, However, they sit firmly between Sigma's art and their regular contemporary offerings. These i-series lenses mix art quality optics with a build quality that puts them above regular contemporary lenses. However, Sigma has made a few compromises with these i-series lenses, but we'll get into those later on. Now, let's take a look at the specs. The Sigma 24mm f3.5 DGDN Contemporary features 10 elements in eight groups, there are seven rounded aperture blades that can help create some nice bokeh. The minimum focusing distance is 4.3 inches or 10.8 centimeters. The aperture ranges from f3.5 to f22. This lens takes 55 millimeter filters, so just make note of that if you like to use filters. There is a seal at the mount and Sigma rates this lens as splash and dust resistant. Despite its metal build, the Sigma 24mm f3.5 weighs just half a pound or 230 grams. And this lens is available in Sony E and the L mount and costs $549. This 24mm Prime features an all metal build. The brushed metal feels great in the hand and it makes you think you're using a lens that should cost a lot more than $549. The aperturing is a nice touch and it feels great. It's not so loose that it will turn freely, but it's not so stiff that it requires a lot of force. The manual focusing ring also turns smoothly as well. Like other i-series lenses, this 24mm comes with two lens caps. One standard lens cap and a magnetic one. The magnetic cap feels nice and it does work well. However, when you have the metal lens hood attached to the lens, it can be tricky to remove the magnetic cap. You also cannot use the magnetic cap if you have a filter on your lens. But overall, the Sigma 24mm f3.5 DGDN feels fantastic. It's a step above regular Sigma contemporary lenses, and honestly, it feels nicer than some of Sigma's art lenses. Now let's talk about autofocus performance. The Sigma 24mm f2 performs really well when it comes to stills photography. I've been using it on my Panasonic Lumix S5 and I have had zero issues with it. You're going to find that focus is rapid and accurate in single and continuous focus modes. Autofocus performance is also great in both good and low light situations. Focusing from near to far is very fast. You'll have no problems capturing shots with this lens. The 24mm f3.5 also works with eye detection as well as animal focusing on the Panasonic cameras. This lens is very impressive when it comes to close focusing as well. With a minimum focusing distance of just 4.3 inches, you can get very creative. Now when using this lens with continuous autofocus, you will notice some pulsing. And while this isn't an issue for stills photographers, it can become problematic for videographers. So if you want to use this lens for video, you'll be better off manually focusing. 
the Sigma 24mm f3.5 DGDN does suffer from focus breathing, unfortunately. If you want to shoot video with this lens, this is definitely something you're going to have to be aware of. The Sigma 24mm f3.5 is easy to use thanks to the well laid out controls and the overall ergonomics. If you're not a fan of changing the aperture via the aperture ring, just set it to A and you can adjust the aperture with your camera body. Manually focusing this lens is a piece of cake as well, thanks to the smooth focusing ring. Combine this with focus peaking and you'll be fine. Now the lens doesn't feature image stabilization, but with IBIS in the Panasonic S5, I had no issues hand holding this lens down to one fifth of a second. This lens is just incredibly nice and easy to use. Ultimately, when it comes to lenses, it's all about the image quality. And I have to say that the Sigma 24mm f3.5 DGDN is another solid performer from Sigma. When shooting wide open at f3.5, you're gonna get images that are sharp from corner to corner. I also haven't noticed any vignetting. Sigma has done a stellar job with the optics in this lens. Your entire image will remain sharp until you hit f14 and then diffraction kicks in. The maximum aperture of f3.5 may be another compromise from Sigma with this lens, but the small aperture meant that Sigma could keep both the size and weight down, and to me, that's great. Honestly, you don't buy 24mm lenses for bokeh anyway, but this lens can still produce. When shooting at f3.5 and at the minimum focusing distance of 4.3 inches, the background simply melts away. In other situations, the Sigma 24mm f3.5 produces smooth out of focus areas. While it's not going to be your best option for background separation or for low light photography, this lens still does a nice job. Couple it with cameras that have IBIS and newer sensors that can produce nice higher ISO images and you can still get nice results in darker scenes. When it comes to the colors the Sigma 24mm f3.5 DGDN renders, I think most photographers will be very happy with the results that they get. The lens doesn't produce overly saturated colors, in fact they're really quite natural. However, it is worth noting that the 24mm f3.5 does produce slightly warmer images than the 35mm f2. Chromatic aberrations are also non-existent with this lens. Praise has to be given to Sigma here. So, is the Sigma 24mm f3.5 DGDN worth $549? It's a solid yes from me. This is a small, solidly built, lightweight prime that has fantastic optics. For photographers, it's a great choice, especially if you're on L mount. However, if you're a videographer, keep in mind the fact that it does have some focus breathing issues and that you cannot de-click the aperture dial. Otherwise, it's a fantastic lens. Now, if you shoot with Sony E-mount cameras, the decision to buy this lens is going to be a harder one, simply because you have so many more 24mm lenses to choose from. However, us L-mount shooters don't have such luxuries. The only other 24mm lens we have on this platform is also from Sigma, and that's the 24mm f1.4 Art. Now, that's a fantastic lens, and if you need extreme low-light performance, that might be the lens you should go with. However, keep in mind that that lens was designed for DSLRs, and it weighs a whopping 2.1 pounds compared to the half a pound that the f3.5 version does. So it's just something you'll have to weigh up. Now, what I can say is that if you decide to buy this lens for either Sony cameras or for L-mount cameras, you're not gonna be disappointed. It'll be $549 well spent. Well, there you have it, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning into this review of the Sigma 24mm f3.5 DGDN. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have, please consider hitting the like button down below. And if you'd like to see more lens reviews and more content in the future, please also hit the subscribe button too. Until next time, take care.